All right, welcome to this lesson on occlusion calling for XR developers. So if you are here, that means that you are an awesome XR developer. Before I start, my name is Ruben. I am uh, the guy behind the game Tefted Guru and also behind the famous or not so famous, but secret hidden gem called Performance Task Force. But I hope that Ferhan did a good introduction already, so I don't need to do the heavy lifting right now. Just a small note, just bear in mind that I normally have a better setup than this shitty camera, only that I just needed to do some traveling to do some optimization consulting work. And here I am with a very bad laptop, very bad webcam, and even worse, microphone. That's the price of being a freelancer, I assume. Anyway, let's get down to business. If you are here, it's because you are going to be extremely busy doing cool things, right? You are possibly doing a hackathon of 48 hours. And you know what? The last thing you should be doing is spending hours on these kind of lessons. That's why we are going to spend hopefully just a few minutes. Okay, when I say a few minutes, I say hopefully less than 60 minutes. You know, this ecological barrier of one hour. So let's talk about occlusion calling for XR developers. Okay, let's just get down to business. Let's get going. So the first question that I like to pose, that I would like to shoot directly at you the face is, why should you care about something called occlusion calling? And the reason is very simple. You as a developer have a budget, right? a performance budget that, you know, uh, we could talk about loading times, we could talk about memory, we could talk about frame rates, all of these things. But if we are talking about occlusion calling, we mainly care about reducing three things. One is the number of draw calls, second is to reduce the overdraw levels, and the third thing is triangle count or vertex count in general geometry complexity. In any game that you make, especially in VR or XR, you will have to fight these three variables, right? And one tool that is excellent to get rid of this is exactly occlusion calling. Yes, Abe, yes as a very fast, uh, you know, a recap, draw calls is basically what issues, what, no, no, what unity issues to your GPU in order to tell, hey, please draw this thing, draw this cube, draw this stone, draw this character, everything, right? One object is generally one draw call, but that will be very expensive. So we have something called patching, right? To merge a lot of draw calls together. So that's maybe you can just have one draw call for drawing a thousand objects, okay? The other thing is overdraw, which is what happens when you just draw something and then you draw something after that on top of it, right? And you know, all the time that you spent drawing this thing is wasted because you don't see it, right? You just drew after that, let's say, for example, a wall, and then all the time that you spend drawing this thing that's behind this wall, like a chair or something, is wasted on the GPU. That's overdraw. The third, the third thing is triangle count, vertex count. I don't have to explain, right? All of these things are expensive if you are dealing with XR development, right? Extremely expensive, especially if you're talking about mobile. And because this is expensive, we have to use tools like occlusion calling. That's why you should care. Now, don't worry about that. We will explain, not we, I would explain what this is all about. So before we start with occlusion calling, let's talk about calling itself. Okay, so what is calling? It is the subtle art of not giving up about invisible objects. Let's say that I am in a room uh, in my flight, right? And then there is another room, but the door is closed. And I have a chair in that room, right? Do I need to spend time drawing that chair? No, because I'm not seeing that, that right? It's in another room. Or let's say that I have, you know, I am looking at you, and then behind me there is a rogue, if you like, uh, RPG games. There's a rogue about to backstab me. I don't see it, right? Otherwise, it would not be backstabbing. That's why I shouldn't waste any time rendering this rogue, because I don't see it, right? So by default, you know, we pay a lot of prices, right? We have a huge overhead of drawing every type of object, even if we do not see that. So Cullen is all about saying, I don't give a boop about all of these things because I don't see them, right? So in order to cope with this cost, we have two strategies. One is, let's call 
the objects or let's forget about rendering the objects that are behind me. For example, that rogue who is about to backstab me in the back. I guess that makes sense, right? If we think about that, it's out of my uh, cone of vision, out of my frustrum of vision. Then we call this frustrum column. Okay, and that happens by default in Unity. You cannot really turn that off. Okay? Everything that is behind your camera is not going to be rendered. And that's actually a bit expensive to calculate. That's why calling always takes a bit of time on the CPU. Now, the other strategy is to, you know, call or stop rendering the objects that are behind walls that we do not get to see. Like if there's a table in that other room and the room is closed and I don't see anything, from that room, then I don't have to waste time drawing that table or the wall or whatever, right? So for that, we have something called occlusion column. Uh, for the description that I just gave you, it will be amazing to use for interiors, and also it will be amazing to use in VR. In VR, I say that because we tend to have, you know, like first person view. And when you have first person view, then many other things, uh, you know, can suddenly become invisible, right? Because we, we just don't have a huge uh, amount of view, right? We don't have a high degree of view with uh, VR. With third person uh, camera, this is a bit more complicated, but yeah, that's about it. Pulling all in all is about, all about, you know, just stop caring about rendering the objects that we do not see. We don't want to waste that precious bandwidth, right? Special memory bandwidth. That's column. First room column ha happens by default. You know, the objects behind me. And a closing column does not happen by default because that is very expensive. Closing column is all about, you know, do not render what is behind other objects, right? Because I cannot see them. Again, a closing column does not happen by default because it's expensive. So that means that if you do not do anything about in general, you will still render the objects that are not visible, right? Behind walls and so on, right? So, calling is now clear. What do we do about this? How do we uh, extract all the performance juice out of OC, occlusion column? It is mm, simple, but can be hard, can be easy. It depends. It's just three steps. First thing is to go and set the static flags in the Unity editor. Let's actually, I'll tap to that. Sorry about my setup again. I am in my laptop. Hopefully I'm recording. Yes, I am recording still. So let's think about all of this from a more practical approach. Here we have this super nice environment called uh, sci-fi or something. Anyway, creepy cat, right? If you want to look at this environment, it's pretty cool. I use it every time in the performance task force to show a lot of the performance optimizations that people do not know about. Anyway, if we think about this scenario, this is quite perfect, right? It is an indoors scenario where, you know, in many occasions, we do not get to see objects that are behind walls, right? For example, if you look at the screen and I'm not in the middle, you will see that we have some kind of room here, right? We were talking about rooms before, and now we are talking again about it. I'm showing you one room. So let's assume that this is one room, right? Actually, this is not the best case scenario for occlusion column, but let's assume that, you know, this is good enough. So we cannot spend one hour talking about this. If I'm here, okay, look at the screen. If I'm here, do you think about, you know, should we care about rendering this chair? Should we care about rendering these buttons? Should we care about rendering this uh, OLED TV? Actually, transparent OLED TV. This is a new thing, by the way. It exists. Pretty cool. No, we should not care about that. However, if we do not know anything about all of this, it is going to you know, render the same. Actually, let me prove this to you. I'm going to go to the camera. I'm going to press Control alt f no? It is. And you are not here. Why not? There we go. It is not Control Alt. It is Control Shift F. Control Shift F. Now I am going to see through the camera this view, right? You see the, the game tab, right? All I see is a wall. However, uh, you know, uh, by default, I said we are rendering everything uh, that is inside this room. And we shouldn't do that, right? This sucks. Let me prove to you 
that this is the case, right? I am just going to open the tab window uh, panel again. Then I'm going to go to window, then uh, analysis, of course, and then frame debugger. Yep, this, this tool is going to let you see step by step uh, what we are going to uh, uh, render from this scene, right? In, in terms of Unity. So let me go to big geometry. And we are, of course, using. Uh, Okay, let's see. G buffer, the famous G buffer. Let's actually do it even easier for us. Let's go to the camera and say, I want to use the forward rendering path. Okay, it's going to be a bit easier for us. Now I'm going to disable the friend debugger. So you see that nothing really changed, right? We still have this here. Now we enable the friend debugger and we are going to see step by step how we render these things. We don't care about the depth pre pass so far. We're just going to see how these things are rendered. So let's see the opaque list. And here it is the render forward. This is how I start to render these things. In fact, what I'm going to do is to change the clear flex. So I just draw a solid color flag. So first we draw the terrain, which we of course do not care about because we don't see it from here. Then we start rendering uh, some walls and such. You see, this is the frame. And then on top of that, we see that we render computer server, we render more doors, floor, roof, panels, things that we do not really care about, right? Well, here the right we care about, but we will see eventually that we are also rendering things that are inside this room, right? In fact, what I could also do is to tell this script, so it doesn't really bother me. I could go to play mode. Then if you see the stats window, we'll see that we have about 3,500 batches or draw calls. Are we looking at something that deserves to be punished so bad with 3.5k draw calls? No, I'm just looking at a stupid wall, right? In fact, we can even go further and get closer to the wall. And here, in theory, we could just draw one wall with one draw call. Two or three, okay, whatever, but not 3,000 draw calls. Why is this happening? happening because by default we do not use occlusion pollen. How nice. Now what do we do about this then? Well we do what I said we would do. Right? First we're going to say hey these objects are going to be set with the right static flags. Okay? We have mainly two static flags that we care about. Those are the occluder static and occludee static. As we are about to see do not worry if you don't get it right now. The second thing is that once we have set the static flags, we are going to bake occlusion column. And three, we're just going to see if this is working, right? So, so what are the static flags? First, we have the occluder static, and then we have the occluder static. The static flags is, uh, you know, whatever you find here under static. You see this static field on top right on the on the inspector. This is uh, telling Unity in which way these objects are going to be static. Static could mean it's not going to move. Static could mean I'm going to use this for baking reflection probes. I'm going to use this for whatever, right? You have actually the list here. If you click here, you have all the options here. You can, for example, use it for uh, baking the left measures, all of these things. So we have here, as I promised, the two static flags that we care about. Occluder static, occludee static. So what are those? Occluder, yeah, just to leave it uh, there hanging, is just something like a wall, right? Occluder is something that occludes other objects. Think of occluders as walls, okay? the walls of a room, things that occlude or cover or hide other objects because they are so big, they are so massive that, you know, they always take out of space and they tend to hide other objects, okay? Then the other one is the occludee static. Those are the chairs or the tables that tend to be occluded by walls and other occludees, right? Again, I think that's the easiest way to think about this flex, occluder 
walls and not clue the stones, buttons, monitors, TVs, whatever it is small. Okay. Now, if you set the static flags right, we will be able to make occlusion column. So how do we do this? Well, first, you know, we could just make the perfect setup and say, okay, this is a wall, right? Nice. Okay, so if this is a wall, what I'm going to say is that this is going to be occluder static. Bam. But no, if we did test, then we will spend one hour. And I don't want to spend one hour, I don't have the time, and possibly I don't even have the battery to do a one hour video. What we're going to do is go to select everything, and I'm going to say, ah, oh, occluder static everything. And occluder static everything. That's it. That's what 80% of the developers do. It is not correct for many reasons, but we could, you know, uh, start with this setup to see and learn how this works. I have set up the red static flex, all right? And what is the second step? To bake occlusion column. How do we do this? Uh, actually, I did not put the first obvious thing is how do you access the, the red panel? You have to go, to go to window, you have to go to rendering, and here you have a panel called occlusion column. You see it here? Okay. So now that we have set the static flags, we have to go to the bake tab. And here we have three parameters, smallest occluder, smallest hole, and back face threshold. Let's start with the easiest one, back face threshold. We don't care about this for a 48 hours hackathon. I don't know if it's 48 hours or it's, if it's a hackathon, I don't know. All I know is that you really have to get the most out of this lesson, so we're not going to care about it. This is just a memory optimization. It's the easiest one. And then we get to the real juice. Smallest occluder. This is the size of the smallest wall, right? Think of the smallest occluder as the output resolution of this occlusion calling algorithm. Okay? The, smallest, the smaller it is, actually, I have to make it up. I wrote it here for you. The smaller that uh, this value is, the more memory usage that you will have in runtime, the more CPU cost is going to cost occlusion calling in runtime, and the more objects that you will be able to call while to optimize. Okay? So if you have a huge resolution for this uh, voxel map, uh, because you set this to one, for example, you will be able to call or to stop dropping a lot of objects. However, the problem is that it will cost you a lot of CPU time and a lot of memory. Okay. If you go to my website, I have a blog post on occlusion column, and I'm not just promoting this thing. I just want to show you one uh, nice graph that I have here. You see this, the smallest, uh, smallest occluder. If I set it to one, this is the cells that Unity or rather Umbra generates for me. However, if I move this, uh, to uh, 3 meters, uh, I will go from 4.3 embytes to 0 0.8 embytes, but here you see the amount of cells that we have. It's just, uh, you know, fewer cells and then uh, fewer uh, resolution, smaller accuracy, right? This is one of the, like, possibly the most important parameter that you have to set. The default, I believe, is 5. And we're saying that, hey, the smallest wall that can include other objects is going to be five. Okay? That's the first uh, parameter. If you do not get it straight away, the definition of all of it, do not worry. Just play with this. This is my suggestion all the time. Do not get stuck trying to prefer, to, you know, to understand the perfect definition of things. Just play with it. That's always going to be uh, the biggest bang for your bank. Then we have the other option, which is the smallest hole, right? Think of that as the input resolution for your occlusion calling baking algorithm. If you set it to something that is very small, then you will have a lot of accuracy at the cost of more uh, of longer build times, right? For the baking parameters for the baking algorithm. And however, if you set it to something small, that means that it, yeah, it is going to take more memory in the editor. It's also going to take you a longer baking time, but it's going to be more accurate, and you will have fewer errors. What's an error in this case? An error is when you stop rendering something that Unity thinks you shouldn't be seeing, but in fact, the real player should be able to see that, right? Okay. So for example, if I set this to 1000, whatever, uh, 
maybe Unity doesn't think that I can see the screen from here. And then it's suddenly I wouldn't be able to see that as a player. This will be totally broken. I will probably just uh, uninstall the game. But no, not uninstall the game. I will first possibly close the game, uh, give it a one-star review, and then uninstall it. Okay? It's not worth the space that it takes on the SSD. So start always with the normal and default uh, parameters that you see here. Once you're happy with some parameters, then just go ahead and click on bake, which we are going to do right now. You see this button called bake? No, you don't, because I am always in the middle. So here it is. I'm going to click on bake. Then I'm just going to have a drink. In the meantime, I really need a drink. No, I'm joking. I'm just going to wait here with you. Computing occlusion. If you think this is too slow, no problem. We're just playing. We are just trying to understand how this works. So what I'm going to do is to change the smallest occluder. Now, I'm going to change the smallest all to, let's say, 0 0.75 is input resolution. So we are going to click back again. Computing occlusion. And then you should be able to see this here. You see here on the bottom right of the editor is a progress bar and then possibly going to be slower as uh, Windows starting up. Let's give it some time. In the meantime, we can continue with the mind map. I'm still recording. Yes, I am. So third step, once you have uh, done the question calling is to answer the question, is this working at all? Is it this really work? Is this really working? And the way we check for wins is by using a combination of the stats panel and profiler plus the occlusion calling preview mode. Okay. Remember the 3000 draw calls that we had before? Just check if we have fewer draw calls than before. Okay. Than before we had occlusion calling. And now this is done. See this? It's totally done. Let's see the result of this. So if I drop the occlusion panel to the right, I could always say, okay, let's check the visualization, right? I go to the visualization tab, then I do like this. And then I select the camera for which I want to check occlusion. And look, here we are visualizing the effects of occlusion calling, right? For this specific camera that I'm touching here. And here with the scene view, we are able to see, you know, what is Unity actually rendering for this? So, you know, I said you can check this out, stats panel. So let's just play it and see the stats panel. Here we have, we have now 1000 batches instead of 3.5K or 3K or whatever, right? So I think that is a bit better. And if you pay attention to all of this, you will see that, of course, we also have fewer triangles, fewer vertices and all of this. And, you know, everything is just working as usual or should be. Otherwise, check the baking parameters. Yeah? I could, in theory, just walk around and blah, blah, blah. How do I even walk, actually? That really doesn't really work. Okay. So that is all in all occlusion claim, right? If I disable occlusion cooling, you will see again that this is, uh, again, super expensive. And that's why you should care about this as a XR developer, because you need performance and you cannot get that performance if we are talking about 3K trocals, that's crazy in VR, and especially if we're talking about uh, mobile VR. Eh? All right, so problems with occlusion calling, a lot. Yeah, we have to be honest, I don't have any reason to lie to you. We have many problems. First of all is the high CPU cost. You see, it is not uncommon for me to see projects where occlusion calling takes only one millisecond, but sometimes I have even seen six, even 10 milliseconds per frame. That's a lot. If you are using Quest, that is more than the half of your budget. So that's no cool. Okay. Now, if you have multiple cameras for whatever reason, then one trick that you can do about this is to disable occlusion calling on secondary cameras. Let's say I wanted to duplicate the number of cameras just for fun, you know, and we will see that occlusion calling is possibly taking four times as the original amount in this case. So if you do something like this and you only need occlusion calling to be done in one camera, this is the case, you have to go to each camera and 
and disable occlusion clip is going to save your butt. I tell you this because it saved my several times. But this is one flag that many people forget about, and then they come crying to me, okay? And I have to just, you know, give him a, a few slaps on the, on the back, so everything is fine. Remember the person calling flag in the camera. Turn that flag off unless you really need it, okay? especially in multi-camera setups. You only have one camera, well, hope that you're making use of cushion calling, otherwise don't take it. High CPU cost. Okay. Now, if your cost is too high, then think of reducing reducing what? The output picking resolution, which is called smallest. Who knows this? Who knows this? Anyone knows this? Smallest occluder. Actually, not reducing, but increasing that. Increasing smallest occluder. The higher it is the uh, less memory that we are going to take and the less CPU cost it's going to take. Another problem is memory cost. Now this is usually, you know, like one M byte, two M bytes, four M bytes, something like that. I don't think it's a huge deal, honestly, but you know, if it is, then you know what to do. Tweak the parameters and even play with the forbidden variable called back phase threshold, whatever. Let's get to the point. All of this, if you are using level of detail, then you have to answer this question. How is Unity going to know which model to use for testing for visibility? Well, Unity just said, okay, I'm just going to get the most detailed level. Okay. So if you have a 10K polygon theme as the most detailed level and another which is a cube, be careful with this because Unity will take the most detailed version of your LODs to bake visibility. So if one LOD level is a sphere and the other LOD level is a cube, hmm, that's going to give, give you problems, right? They have a different shape, so you have to be careful with that. Now, another problem is that, yeah, occlusion calling is expensive and it relies on baking. That's why we have tons of limitations on, you know, on the statics, right? So basically we can use a dynamic occludes for example, if we think of players, right? We can stop rendering players and players move, right? They cannot be static, uh, but we cannot have really dynamic occluders, things like that. So it is heavily static. The biggest problem for me, honestly, is the high CPU cost because sometimes it can take more than half of your CPU budgets if you're talking, uh, talking about VR and that's not cool. That's why there are alternatives. So I have a friend called Patrick Kulik. I know how to sp uh, speak German, kind of. I've been living almost 10 years in Berlin. And uh, yeah, Patrick Kunig. And he developed a nice and super cool uh, asset called Perfect Column that I have bought myself. Yes, it is not affiliate thing. I just told you this is cool. Right? And the huge advantage of this is that it costs you almost nothing on the CPU. When I say nothing, I mean 0 0.01 millisecond. That is amazing, okay? So if you are really tight on CPU budgets, think about this plugin. Now, already, before you buy anything, before you take your wallet and give the note to the wrong person instead of me, think about this. It also has more limitations because if Umbra, which is the solution from Unity, supported and I make Occludes, this plugin, uh, you know, it is not coming so clear uh, with these terms, right? It is mostly everything about static objects, but it is pixel perfect. So if this might be a good uh, fit for your application, think of this plugin. I have used it and I love it for this same reason. Yeah, it takes longer time to bake. Yeah, it takes also mem more memory in runtime, but dude, if we are paying just nothing for in CPU time, then, you know, all these this limitations, you know, uh, I don't care about it. Then obviously, it depends on the project. Now, I have explained what occlusion calling is. Look at this mind map. But think about it. Okay? Occlusion calling is super helpful. Again, remember, when you have interiors and then also when you have VR, right? I don't care if you're doing prototypes on VR or something, it has to perform well. Because I, if, if I'm testing applications or games around, in VR, for example, 
I don't want to be throwing up or filling up buckets of vial every two experiences. I don't want that. Your app has to perform well. Therefore, you have to keep occlusion calling in mind, right? Now, what do we do now? Four things, I think. Fly away and be free. Get uh, coffee with occlusion calling, of course, and uh, have fun with it. Rock your event with occlusion calling, whenever it makes sense. And Normally, it is 95% of the cases, right? Second thing, grab my free Unity performance checklist, okay? The basic edition is free. If you want to upgrade, sure, be my guest. I don't care about the money. Just mentioning that it is a cool checklist where you can see, I don't know how many, over 100 performance tips that many people forget about while developing their games. And, you know, it just lets you, you know, just follow the tips and see if you just forgot about something obvious or something not so obvious. And then just by ticking a few things, you might go from 60 to 1000 FPS. I don't know, this might be the case. It has been the case for many companies and many of my clients. Right? If you really want to kick ass in terms of performance, then I have to say that's just join my Unity Performance Task Force. Just go to 3wsperformancetaskforce.com. This is a very nice place where I publish all the um, insider secrets of Unity performance optimization. Anyway, this talk is not about that. And I guess that otherwise, if I make it longer, then Fahrenheit is really going to kick my ass. So let's get to the q and I. Let's go to the questions and answers, beer, water, whatever. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And then, uh, uh, yeah, let's get to the Q&A.